as you know, is Black History Month, and today we're kicking off a weekly feature so exciting, profiling the accomplishments and contributions of some of the most remarkable black Americans. This morning we're meeting a 21-year-old coding whiz who's not only changing the game of his industry, he's also leveling the playing field. My name is Idris Sandu. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I define myself as an architect. Yeah. When the first iPhone came out, it was a very pivotal um, point you know, for me as a young teenager, seeing Steve Jobs introduce this to the world. And we are calling it iPhone. I just knew that that was going to be the future. So I just started going to the library for about two years straight and I read on every programming language in existence. I would meet uh, somebody from Google that noticed me reading all of these books and came up to me and asked me why. And I told him that I wanted to help the world. About the age of 13, I'm essentially shadowing and interning at Google. I attended Nathaniel Narbonne High School in the South Bay. There was sort of a of issue of understaffing. You know, students were finding it very difficult to navigate um, throughout the whole campus. I was like, yo, I have an idea, why don't I create um, an app? The school was receptive of it, and then in about a month we had over like 400 to 500 students downloading this app and using it, and we just saw that the school had a, um, a better productivity rate. It would lead me to, you know, meeting President Obama. For me to be able to stand in front of a role model that I can see and touch and feel and hear, it was very impactful. And then one thing that really resonated with me that he said was that he liked my afro and it reminded him of a younger version of himself. But him saying that was a sign and affirmation for me that I could be in that same position. The epitome of what that meant to me is carried across, you know, throughout different stages in my career. You know, whether that was consulting for Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or Uber, still being authentic to who I was. And to this day, I think there's nothing that I can do that will impress my mom more than meeting Obama. <laughs> I also had people telling me, like, for what you are doing and just the political influence you'll have, it's not smart for you to align with this certain person. The kids that look just like me and speak just like me and, and wear clothes just like I do, to influence them, I would have to make information, I would have to make tech look cool. I'm a urban legend, South Central in a certain section, can't express how I curb the Texas. That collaboration with Nipsey was very important because in many ways, Nipsey authenticated me. Pull up tomorrow, though, Marathon grand opening of the world's first smart store, the world's smartest store. We launched the store and it was, it was amazing. We shut down two blocks. We had one of the most OG street people literally co-signing you and it just gave you like this instant like stamp you know he's good two people from totally different worlds but having that common passion for wanting to impact and change the world and guide younger people into knowing that you can be cool and smart and that you shouldn't have to compromise on both gen z is widely known as the internet generation they grew up in a world dominated by the presence of the internet i did a ted talk a while back and i was explaining to people that Tech bias isn't just about the people behind these algorithms, it's also about identifying problems that a specific demographic has. For a minority growing up in this era, we risk the chance of losing a seat at the table. Where I see it at the end, being able to literally create anything, but not using that skill set or that privilege to disenfranchise and you know, displace people, using that for the greater good of humanity. Amazing. Yes, even bigger things ahead for Mr. Sandu there. We're, we're going to be on the lookout.